So it's indeed to take. The righty stands over it. Curls one in. Out comes Becerra, and there's Asma Jordson. It's David Asma Jordson who scores against UMass once again and gives BU a 1-0 lead. And that you just heard was David Asma Jordson's goal in the first game of the season against the UMass Minutemen. It was the second goal of his career. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm Dave Souza alongside Alex Greenberg, the Patriot League Network broadcaster for the BU men's soccer team this year. Alex, thanks again for coming. Yeah, Dave, thanks for having me. And last week, Alex joined us where we talked about the, the rough ending to BU season where they fell against the Bison. Really kind of unfortunate loss for them, kind of not able to get over that hump. But today we're here to talk about a happier note, I guess you could say, and kind of want to talk about the future and the past of BU all wrapped up in a two specific guys in David Asbert Jorts and Magnus Benedictson. Yeah, absolutely. Those are two of uh, the Terriers' most important players, both from Iceland, and they kind of represent an overarching trend that Coach Noah Roberts has had in terms of recruiting. Exactly. You know, there's a whole slew of international players that the Terriers have had. Both Asper Jornsson and Magnus Benedictson, though, coming from Reykjavik, Iceland, kind of a, for all of us who haven't really been out of the United States for too much, Iceland kind of just seems like this far off nation, but it's very familiar to Coach Roberts and company. He was telling us that they've been to Iceland before plenty of times to get players. They've had them for the past 12 years, and that this isn't really a newfound trend for them to be able to get these type of guys. You know, I've had players from Iceland for over 12 years now. So it, it's been a it's been something that we've been doing for a long time is is you know uh, it's just a place that we got a couple kids and, and they were fantastic people, uh, good players, uh, good students, good citizens and and we've been before they took charge of Europe this summer. We've been we've been there way, be, way before that and um, so you know like uh, hopefully we'll have kids there in the future. But um, you know they're just great great citizens and, and good players they're steady you, you know the, the, the kids uh, the, the, you know we probably had about eight of them over the years uh, and every single one of them has been dependable and there you have it coach Roberts kind of really harping on the reason why he loves going after those Icelandic players they've really been ingrained in this culture here for BU at least on the soccer team's purposes so Alex you've been covering this team for an entire season now what does David Asper Jornson and Magnus Benedictson, what do they bring to the table that really helps this team? I think they both bring a technical ability um, that, you know, isn't always present in players at this level in college. Uh, as we said, Iceland, you know, it seems like a far off place, but, you know, it's really not that long a flight from, uh, from Boston, you know. It, I think it's only like four or five hours even to get out there. But, you know, they, these are players who have grown up playing soccer, um, and I think they come here to BU and they offer something different. Uh, in the case of Asma Jordson, he was a great center back for the Terriers, but on top of that, he could make a run forward, he could score a goal in the box. He had the skill. He wasn't just a big, physical, brutish center back like sometimes you see at this level. Uh, and Benedictson, you know, his hallmark of his game is his skill and his vision to see passes that, to be honest, sometimes uh, homegrown USA players don't really see sometimes. Yeah, and Benedictson is really a, an interesting case, too, because last year, his freshman campaign, he kind of was mixing things up with TJ uh, Butsky. He was getting swapped in and out. wasn't really saying consistent playing time, unlike Matt McDonald and Jerry Ozor, who this year have kind of really been the they've really been spearheading that youth movement that Coach Roberts has been going with. But Benedictson, this season, especially at the beginning of it when he was racking up assists, was integral to BU's offense and their success early on. Yeah, he had four assists after four games uh, and was really clicking so well with uh, Anthony Viteri and with Felix DeBona, and they kind of just created this like three-headed spear of an attack in the middle, and they were all combining so well and finding each other, and uh, Magnus was setting Anthony and Felix up. And then as the season went on, they, they kind of drifted away from it a little bit and attacked uh, from wide positions more, and that's mean that meant less playing time for Benedictson. Uh, but still, at the end of the season, when 
you know, they're a chase when they're chasing a game in the playoffs against Bucknell. Magnus was in the game because Coach Roberts knows that or knew that he needed uh, Benedictson's skill there. Exactly, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you have David Esper Jorgensen, who kind of the opposite. Where instead of having that inconsistent playing time, David Esper Jorgensen has been one of the most consistent set pieces or kind of immovable parts of this team for the past four years. He's always on that back line. I think he missed one game this year, and it was due to injury it, midway yeah, through the season. Yeah, it was one game uh, against Dartmouth when him and uh, Shakeley uh, and was someone else David got David Amorani or Mark yeah. Wadid, one of them was out as well. But yeah. Terry ended up coming out of that game too. So there was a whole slew of Terriers missing on that one. If that game had been a Patriot League game, as Jordan would have played, he played every game this season except for that one where he was rested. Yeah, So he was, as you said, the cornerstone of their defense. Exactly there. And, you know, it, it's interesting to see – the backgrounds that so many of these players come from because uh, they're all so different, especially with a lot of international students, but at the same time, they're all the same. Everybody, you know, they're playing for all these different slew of club teams, but it all sounds like, you know, I've been playing soccer whenever, ever since I was very young. I got the uh, chance to speak with David Esper Jorgensen uh, a couple days ago talking about his background that he had um, just going into soccer, and he just said, and I'm quoting him, that it seems like all he did was play soccer when he was growing up. When, you know, when he was in his teens, he was on the field all the time. And then you know he had the opportunity to be selected for the U seventeen national team for ice um, for Iceland. Then they selected him again for U nineteen and for U twenty one, and so that was really kind of how he was able to break out into that spotlight there, where he was going to get noticed by a lot of different guys. But thanks, Ben Dixon kind of had a little bit of a different road where, I mean, they both were still playing from a young age, but Benedictson t- took him halfway around the world. He started playing soccer at the um, age of four or five. Then he could first start training over there in Iceland. His father was the president of a soccer club, much like Felix de Bona, and he was just tagging around. But then as he grew older, he actually moved to Tokyo, Japan. Wow, I didn't and, know that. And played in a local Japanese youth club for five years, and he lived there. And so, you know, after a stint in the Tokyo League, he ends up moving back to Iceland and partnering up with Asper Jorgensen. Yeah, that's a very interesting route. But as you said, I think the, uh, the constant here is that these kids have been playing soccer uh, and have been being developed as soccer players since they were so young. Um, a lot of the times the American system just can't really compare to that in terms of earliness of access to the proper education and development and, and let's let's be honest it's a tough you know I I played soccer growing up but I never played at the level that these kids played at it's a it's tough when you're a kid and so much of your childhood is dominated by soccer it's great for your development but at the same time it's not easy for everyone to just kind of put on hold having a real life and you know thinking about soccer 24 7 from a young age exactly and then the recruitment process came and you know, it's it's really interesting to see how players are recruited internationally. I mean, there are a couple of international students that aren't so international, if you know what I mean, where you have Jerry Ozor, he comes from Ghana, kind of far off, but he's from nearby Milton Academy. Easier opportunity for Coach Roberts to go see him just driving up from his home down there in Braintree up to Milton is not too bad of a drive, whereas Asper Jornson coming in from Iceland, it was a bit of a struggle, so... When talking to Coach Roberts about this, about kind of the the dangers, I guess you could say, of recruiting, he was talking about how great it was that he had such a strong network of people that have allowed uh, that have allowed him uh, to recruit internationally. There, are a lot of his players currently that come from different countries are all from former Terriers. You have Nicky Wieners coming in from Germany. You have Jasper Verplank, whose father played here. He hails and from his Belgium. Too. And his brother, too. His mother. His mother, yeah. His mother was a tennis So I think player. it was always determined where he was going to go to school. Exactly. I don't think they would have let him go anywhere else. But in, in terms of Esper Jornson, Roberts was talking about his experience, then basically how recruiting internationally, while it is hard, there are some advantages to it. And it definitely makes things, you know, kind of easier. It's, you know, I've said this a bunch of times. It's internationally, it's 18-year-old kids and 18-year-old kids. They talk differently. They have different accents. But they the, want the same wants in there, you, you know. It, it's the, they they want to play football. They want to they want to meet people. They want to study. Um, 
and, and they want to they, they want to compete. So, you know, I, I think the inter, you know most of our international kids, believe it or not, come from if you, if you trend it down, they all come from the kind of the you know they come from formal players, most of them, Icelandic kids. You know, this guy calls about this guy. You know, this guy. They, you know, like you know, David, uh, our former goalkeeper, called about David, and and he said this guy would fit into what we do at BU. And um, he's a good student. Jack, uh, he's a good student. He's, he's a good player, and you know. So uh, that's how most of them go. We have a, a Norwegian player to play with Francis. You know, graduated 15 years ago. I'm sorry, 30 something years ago. And exactly there, there's a little bit of background noise. Coach Roberts uh, acknowledging his players as they're walking by after practice. But, you know, having this great network of people in order to recruit and then at the same time being able to relate to all the international students by kind of seeing the immense similarities that just 18-year-olds have around the world has really worked in Roberts' advantage. And it's not one, it's not a strategy that a lot of coaches, especially in the Patriot League, have been utilizing. A lot of them go to a lot of the national Northeast kids where Roberts kind of goes off the grid almost to just these kind of far-off lands to bring in players, and he's been successful. Yeah, it's tough because, you know, obviously BU as a school has a lot of money, but as a soccer team, they really can't afford to have, like, giant scouting networks where they're keeping up on so many different players it has to be targeted searches like that in on the international scale so as coach roberts says you know an old player recommending as bjornson you go check him out and he is good you can make that happen And at the same time i think other patriot league schools it's a they're just a little bit of a tougher draw uh than bu you know it's for international kids in a, an international kid um, unless they really, really like the campus, doesn't want to go live in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, they're going to hear Boston and actually know where and what that is, and they're going to be thrilled to come play here at BU, and I think it's just going to keep going on. Exactly. Like you said, you know, the city of Boston is also such a great recruiting tool for them. It's a historic city. It's a, a notable city where you can get a lot of uh, get a lot of people to be interested in it, and that is kind of sets... Roberts and BU above um, than some, you know, schools like Lafayette. Like, don't get me wrong. Not bad like, schools. The Leopards but are a great program. They have a good school. They're not going to bring in the same type of international players that BU has done and is going to keep doing. Exactly. I'd say the only other place where you can maybe get a similar result in the Patriot League, at least, is American right down there yeah, in Washington, D.C. Probably. And you heard uh, Coach Roberts just uh, a couple minutes ago talking about how David Ezra Johnson came in with a former goaltender at BU, had seen him play up in Iceland. You know, he's getting that exposure in the U19 and U21 national teams for Iceland. He's getting that exposure and gets noticed by a former BU alum. He calls up Coach Roberts. And then from there was kind of very interesting. Uh, Ezra Johnson told him how he had planned on applying to BU. He flew out. They kind of had almost like a tryout type scenario where they got to take a look at him. And they offered him a spot on the team. And basically from there, he's kind of continued that revolving door or the, I, pardon me, the opening of the door, keeping it open for those players in Iceland. Magnus Benedictson coming in two years after uh, David Esper Jordan. And Benedictson really credits uh, the his reasoning for coming here to Esper Jordan. He says he wasn't recruited. You know, Coach Roberts didn't f get out on a plane and come out and see Magnus Benedictson playing in the Tokyo League, but what he did, uh, Benedictson meaning, when he had been playing with Esper Joints, he found out what type of a school BU was, what type of a program and a coach that Neil Roberts was, and he decided that he wanted to go there. So he applied over to Questrom, got in, and then he sends Coach, um, he reaches out to Coach Roberts and tells him he has interest in playing on the soccer team, and he's just been battling his way. He's kind of a scrappy guy. Yeah, that's an interesting way to get on the team, but kind of a way that signifies, as you said, a scrappy personality and a personality that's going to be willing to work hard. And I think if you ask Coach Roberts, um, that's exactly what he's looking for from his student athletes when they commit to BU because, you know, obviously it's tough playing at a big school, at a, you know, a very good soccer program in the Patriot League, but it's also tough at the same time, uh, you know, staying above the water academically at BU while you juggle 
this. So it's it's not, you know, it's a unique type of person who can come in and be a student athlete like that. And especially you having to uproot yourself. I mean, I live... Yeah, that too. Moving over to a different country. Bo- both yeah. of us live maybe 20, 30 minutes away from our home. So yeah. it's a hop, skip, and a jump for us. But when you're getting on a plane flying over 12 hours to get here from Iceland, it's a bit of a culture shock, I would say. And Alex, how... What kind of impact do you think that having a coach that has been here so long, Robert's been here 32 years as a head coach, 37 years if you include his time as an assistant, you know, what kind of impact does that have on recruiting? You mentioned that he was getting all these former uh, former players to help him out. Yeah, you know, I think it shows consistency in the program to players coming from abroad who maybe don't know a ton about BU soccer. They can see, oh, they've had the same coach for 33 years they must be doing something right. He must know what he's doing. And then they come over and actually meet Ro- Coach Roberts. You know, we both know Coach Roberts. He's just a really great guy. Like, you may be intimidated by his, you know, his Boston accent at first. And he's, you know, a classic old soccer coach who, you know, he's got some um, conservative ways about him in terms of the game. And then you come up and you actually speak with him. And he's a great guy. He's so easy to talk to you. It makes you feel comfortable. I think that's what the international kids are seeing and they're being able to relate and connect with this guy where, you know, Coach Roberts was totally fine with someone quieter like David Asbjornsson coming in and playing such a big part because I think he's just a good coach and understands that each player is different, but at the same time um, they need to all have this similar quality of being, of coming to Boston and wanting to work hard. Exactly, and you were just talking about how Roberts really kind of accepting of all different types of players. You know, you look at three of the big team leaders on this year's squad. You have Matt Gilbert and Felix DeBona, two of them who are really vocal guys on and off the field. You can see it just with their play and then the way they're interacting with their teammates. And you can just hear from the sentiments that are expressed by their teammates and by their coach of how much of leaders they are. And then you have David Esber Jorgensen, who probably signifies, we talked about he was the cornerstone of that yeah. defense. He's not the most vocal guy. But he, what he does is he leads by example. He's got stellar play on the pitch. He's very, very loud, kind of calling out to his defenders what their role is. But off the field, he's very, very quiet. And I think Coach Roberts really respects that type of play where, you know, you have a guy who doesn't really like to talk or do too much, but what he does well is his job, and he tries to explain that to his teammates as best he can. Yeah, and I think someone like David, you know, as you say, they lead by example. He's the type of guy who the freshmen see on the first day of training in the summer and they see him going 100% in August before the games have even started. And they see that and that does make an example and that shows what they need to do. And it's important that you have both types of leaders, someone who's going to be loud and in your face and let you know if you've messed up and someone who's also just going to be sort of quietly showing you what needs to be done. Exactly. And Robert's harped on that when we got to speak with him about what kind of player Asper Jorgensen and what kind of leader he had been on and off the pitch. Um, David's, a, David's a very quiet kid, believe it or not. You know, on the field he's he's demanding, and, and but he's off the field he's very very quiet. So his presence in the locker room is more his work ethic. His he doesn't say a lot, um, but he's uh, you know in training and everything else is he's more kind of. His actions speak for him, but uh, he's a solid player. The last two years, he's been so solid for us. It's been you know, so steady, um, you know. Well, like he was saying, just having that kind of steadying force in the locker room is very similar to Anthony Materi, you know, having a bunch of extroverts, while it can be good to, you know, light the fire and get people going, sometimes when you have too many of them in one place, it can kind of turn ugly if too many people are trying to shout over each other. So to have that staying forces of a materia and of an Asper Jorgensen is really beneficial. And I think it's also beneficial because when you just look at how soccer is as a game, um, if you don't have a consistent, solid back line, you're not going to do well. That's what any coach would pick if they could have the best part of their team be a consistent attacking force or a consistent back four and a keeper. Uh, they're going to take the defense and the goalie. And that's, why, that's part of the reason why BU was so successful this year. They gave up in the regular season the fewest goals in the Patriot League because they've had David Asbury Johnson, who's a rock and has been a rock there for three years now, um, and then Adam Shakeley alongside him, another player who's an upperclassman and has been there and played a lot in his years. Um, so that's just another instance of what Asbury Johnson was able to bring, that consistency that 
allowed them to be so good defensively just while, while throughout his time here. Exactly, like you said, you know the the adage is defense wins championships, and I think that's specifically true when you have players like David Edward Jones and like Mac Gilbert on that team. Those senior leaders who are really shut down and able to lock it in and keep defenders to the outside and keep balls from getting into the net. And what works so well for Asbury Jornson is not only his style of play, but just the game in which he's playing. I mean, soccer is not a high-scoring game by any means. When you want, you want to have such a shutdown defense because games are decided one to nothing all the time. Yeah. So, you and know, BU had a bunch of one nothing games this season where, you know, they got a goal eventually, but they won because of their defense. Exactly. It's not like hockey where you can give up a. You can give up an early goal and you can come back from that and put it away. In soccer, that happens, but it's a lot more rare to see it. Yeah, it's easier to protect the, uh, to protect the lead. Exactly. And then we uh, spoke with Esber Jornson about what he felt Magnus Benedictson brought to the table, and he just was gushing over how great he thought of. Uh, player Magnus was. He's got that explosive speed he was referring to. Uh, he, apparently all the players in the locker room have a nickname for him. They call him Magnus the Magician. And I'm quoting from Asper Jornstein. It says he's a very smart, very skilled player. He's good at finding holes in the opponent's defense and his timing of through balls is unpredictable. He often catches them on his uh, when defenders are on their heels and he makes great runs with, with the ball and without it. He's making space. He's doing a bunch of different things that are really contributing to a, uh, the great offense that we had this season. And now right there is just all you need to know about Benedict and all you need to know about the relationship between these two guys. Yeah, it was definitely a lot easier for Magnus to come here knowing that David was here and has had success here and can relay that success to Magnus before he actually came to the program. But then as well, Dave, as you just said, just having two Icelandic players on the team puts you just kind of it just gives you an advantage above the competition and especially when one of them you know obviously I'm sure they would speak about each other well for hours if they could just because they're two quality players and their relationship has been really beneficial for BU and it's also just interesting to note that it these guys didn't just meet each other when they came to Boston they had known each other over in Iceland before yeah. and they were playing together after uh Benedictson returned from playing in the Tokyo League, and as for Jornson was playing on those U-17, U-19, U-21 national teams, they had gotten to know each other, so they are familiar faces. They've got that chemistry, and while they're not really combining all the time because they're on different sides of the ball, having that chemistry in the locker room is imperatively important. Absolutely, and it just helps you know those two players settle in and be more comfortable in the team. Um, and even if that's not the most obvious benefit, still, you want every player to be like that. Exactly. And you know what also makes Bennett Dixon so good and so vital to this team is he knows his role so well. We were talking about how earlier in the season he was combining great with Viteri and DeBona. And, you know, the temptation for a younger guy, especially playing striker and looking to prove himself after not having a really consistent playing time last year, is to go out there and try to you know, prove your worth on the score sheet. And Benedictson kind of knows that he's not the most, you know, he's the highlight creator. real goal scorer. Yeah. You know, he's the creator. He's not the scorer. And he definitely knows that because, you know, I think there were even some times this season where Coach Roberts might have been yelling at Magnus from the sideline, have a shot, and he was being too unselfish and giving it off to another teammate. And, you know, that's great. Um, that's the strength of his game, but you know he's so willing to create that sometimes he should find his shot a little bit more. Exactly. We got a chance to speak to him about what he th thought about his own style of game. Okay. I mean, I think I'd say my job is pretty much the easiest. We've got so much talent uh, up front, as you mentioned with Viteri and uh, Devona. All I have to do is really look up and uh, pick up, pick out a pass to them, and they. I mean, they're really the ones doing most of the work. Um, like I said, all, I, all I'm doing is, is finding them out at the right time. And I guess that's kind of my job. You know, it's just deflecting the, his own praises onto his teammates there, kind of just showing, you know, what a great teammate he is in the locker room and on the field. He was, I believe he was fourth on the team in points following uh, Viteri DeBona and uh, freshman Matt McDonald. What does the future hold for Magnus Benedictson, Alex? Uh, I think the future holds a bigger role. Next year, Anthony Viteri is going to be a senior. Uh, Benedictson's going to be a junior. 
Um, so, you know, that I think BU is going to have to change up their style a little bit for next season because Viteri and Benedictson on paper um, and will be two of their best players next season, uh, but they're two central players. So um, we saw against Bucknell when BU was pushing it, they wanted both players on the field, uh, but it wasn't really working that well when Viteri was out wide or when Benedictson was out wide because they want to be central. So I think the future with BU is finding a way to integrate Benedictson more into the team so he's playing... Uh, a lot of every game next year and starting most games next year. I think that'll be the hope because he's got such great potential and is such a skilled player. Um, Coach Roberts is just going to have to tinker with the system a little bit so he can shoehorn Viteri and Benedictson into the same team. Uh, but uh, they're going places with young players. I mean, there's a lot of good young players in the Patriot League, but I think BU probably has the best uh, young class as a whole. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see how that offense is going to be next year. I mean, you are losing Felix Tabona, who is just a really, really stout striker who has the ability to score any time. But you've got so much young talent. You have Vettieri, who's going to be a senior now. He's been lighting it up for you guys for two years. You have Magnus Benedictson, who I really think is going to be hitting his stride next year. Definitely. You saw flashes of it at the beginning of this season. I think he's going to have a more consistent output from a points perspective, and I think he's also just going to be helped so much by having Ozor and by having McDonald, who now get a full season under their belts. They're going to be an offense to be reckoned with, I think, this uh, this next season. Yeah, you know, I, it's uh, it's going to be tough for Matt McDonald to come in and replace Felix Dubona as the starting striker, um, but from what we've seen this year, he's got the skill. Uh, you know, it's just going to take a bit of work in preseason to get them all on the same page again without knowing that Felix DeBona is up top and David Asper Jornson's at the back. Exactly, and speaking of David Asper Jornson, you know, he's graduating senior. We can't really talk about the future uh, the future he has on this BU team, but it's going to be interesting to see how his soccer career progresses. He said that in Iceland, um, a lot of the leagues they have are semi-professional, so a lot of players have, you know, a second job, so he's going to be going home trying to play more soccer and he's going to be having a job at the same time so he's going to be balancing that home and work life you know we saw Iceland kind of come out of oblivion in the Euro Cup I'm not too too familiar with how they are as a as a national team yeah what are any chances if any chances that Asper Jornsson can possibly even make it well uh, I think he's definitely got a chance to play professional football even above the league in Iceland, which, as you said, isn't that great. Um, playing for the Icelandic national team is going to be tough because this is their golden generation right now. Um, but at the same time, the players who people know from the Icelandic national team, Gilfi Sigurdsson, um, Bod Varsson, I don't even know how to pronounce his first name, they don't play defense. These are attackers, so you know there's really not a David Asbjornsson type consistent always in their center back on the Iceland team. And, you know, he's not going to be in the team anytime soon. But if he works his way uh, onto a professional team somewhere, it's definitely possible. I mean, Iceland is smaller population-wise than Massachusetts, so there's only so many people he can uh, that can be picked from. But he's a bit unlucky that he's trying to play for Iceland now as opposed to, say, 10 years ago when they were pretty awful and no one really even thought about them as a national team. And now they're one of the top... 25 teams in the whole world and made the semifinals of the Euros. Exactly. And, you know, Alex, I want to thank you again for joining us here today. We're in a room in Boston University's beautiful co uh, communication school, College of Communications, pardon me. Uh, you know, thank you for yeah. everything over this past couple of weeks helping us out with our podcast no, here and for broadcast and for the Patriot League Network. Thanks for having me, man. And uh, we're just hoping that. Do you soccer can win some more in the future? Exactly. Want to send a thank you out to David Ezra Joinson, Magnus Benedictson, and Coach Neil Roberts. For my co-host Alex Greenberg, I am Dave Souza. Thanks for stopping by.